Hello there, and uh, welcome back. Well, if you're fondling along, you know that I'm working towards getting the uh, engine motor uh, installed and also the rest of the stern gear, so the, you know, the propeller, the uh, stern gland, the cutlass flaring. So that is what I uh, am going to be working on now, and hopefully by the end of the week I have a propulsion system. Again, with the whole ethos, add things while you can get to them, I've put a, the connections for the keel cooler uh, in. The keel cooler is for the uh, motor, which is water-cooled, and is massive. These are looks by just stand, you know, standard ones for a proper diesel propulsion engine. The actual cool, keel cooler, if you bought it separately, is about the size of my hand, so uh, yeah, anyway, it's what I've got. Well, if everything goes away, hopefully this is the last time that the motor's going from here to here. Well, as you can see, uh, can you, so bright out here, I can't, yes, but as you can see, uh, Deb Dale have yet to actually totally finish the uh, rudder uh, restoration, as it were. However, this is to my advantage in some ways because I've realised I'm going to have to slightly move the this part of the rudder to one side to get the uh, stern tube in from the stern tube, not the stern tube, the propeller shaft in from this side. So uh, it saves me having to undo all this. Hopefully that's enough because you can't get it any more out of the way and as we well know you can't actually remove it without getting a forklift around. Right, so I need to get something done with this and uh, also realise huh, realize I need to uh, take, the, take the masking tape off that I, when I did the blacking that time a bit ago. Right, so this is the stern tube and uh, <laughs> inside there goes what it, this is a, a cutlass bearing and uh, as you can see there's, it's basically a bronze tube with some uh, rubber, rubber sort of bushing in there and those, these these slits as it were that's for some water to go down and then that lubricates and cools the uh, cools the bearing traditionally boats used to use uh, nothing like these are these are from sort of sailing sailing boat technology as it were uh, traditionally used a, a, a rope well I'm not, and when I say traditionally actually uh, probably the majority of boats actually use a, uh, a rope uh, gland and that's basically a very tight piece of rope around the uh, propeller shaft and then you have this greaser which forces grease around uh, into the rope to so it can you know so they can slide uh, anyway because I was just buying because I was doing it myself I've just decided to buy everything from uh, from Vitas for the stern gear with the hope that then that mean it all fit together relatively uh, relatively straightforward and they don't do greasers they, they they're far too uh, they're far too focused toward lumpy lumpy water boats as in sailing boats and marine boats so uh, so we have a couple sparing I'm not the only, anyway, lots of people use these, don't get me wrong. Anyway, so that goes in there. Now, another of these things, had I, uh, had I not chatted to Rachel, I would just be taking this and whapping this uh, in with a hammer because it's about the right size, but it doesn't quite go in easily. However, uh, Rachel told me that was a, would be a very bad idea. And what I need to do is, uh, I've got this uh, flap uh, drum sander here, size to be slightly bigger than this and I need to put this, I also have Rachel's drill extension which I wouldn't be able to do without this so thank you uh, and obviously I basically just need to clean out and slightly ream out the, uh, the stern tube Well, no matter how much sanding you do, that is as far as it will go. Uh, there will be a little bit sticking out because inside there's an inner lip, uh, and then you're not going to be. I'm not going to be sanding that away. But as you can see, that's uh, it's a continuous. It's it's right against the uh, next. It's right up against the next uh, inner stern tube. So uh, it's clearly where it's meant to be. Introducing one propeller shaft which is way too long for what I need and will have to be cut down. However, for now, I'm just going to uh, sounds really good. <laughs> shove it in and 
hopefully it will help me align the, basically align the, the motor. Well, I've loosely put the coupling on without the uh, R&D uh, connection in there. Just said to try and help me on a very high level to try and help me lie it. Well, that's the uh, coupling uh, very loosely put in. I say loosely. I mean, it's not it's not anywhere near aligned in the way that you'd have to have it to, to actually work. But what it should do is let me uh, then work out how long the actual propeller shaft needs to be. Well, having put the uh, motor in, I've now found uh, what this week's hitch is going to be. Uh, and I like last week, this one is uh, in some ways entirely, entirely self-inflicted. However, it is a hitch and uh, not a total disaster. Well, I hope not anyway. Well, after all the, uh, the, you know, the, the, the faff and, uh, uh, and, and help from Colecraft and getting the uh, engine block uh, lifting blocks uh, done, I find to my horror that they're probably just a little bit too short. As you can see, these I'm, I'm, I'm past the margin of where uh, where they need to be. Basically my own fault, because while I measured as carefully as I could, and I did measure multiple times, uh, at one point I was measuring by the stern tube here, and the other point I was measuring up here, and kind of assuming that the, the floor or something... Are you... <laughs> stupidly... <laughs> Absolutely stupidly, I was expecting that this thing would be a straight line, and it's not. And because of that, uh, I'm about a, I'd say about, about a centimetre out. Uh, not the end of the world, though. What I can, what the plan is, is tomorrow uh, I will go across to Andycraft and see if I can get a couple of uh, more one, ten millimetre thick uh, steel plates and use them as shims, which is what most people do on end. So I'm going to have a, a shim on the shin. But what else can I do? In the meantime, I can, uh, dis you know, it's, I've, I've got this aligned enough that uh, I can uh, progress with the other, other things while I'm waiting, so it's not like a, it's a sudden screeching halt. Well, the length of the tape there, that's, uh, that's the amount of propeller that I need to go between the, the motor and the edge of the stern tube, and then I'll need to add a, uh, the necessary bits for the for the actual propeller and a slight gap between the stern tube and the propeller. Yeah. As you can see, <laughs> I've got <laughs> I've been sold far more propeller than I than need. Which oh by the way, I need to th this is just for measurement. I will be cutting it the the end of the propeller is uh there's a special the special sort of well the key for it is is that end so I'll transfer that measurement to that one. Right, well I've measured and measured and measured again and it's time to have a go at cutting prop shaft and uh, the thing is <laughs> I only have one cutting reel and I suspect it will take this solid thing will take more than one so <laughs> maybe a maybe a two-part uh, process with a trip to Margate Harbour in between but let's see well to my pleasant surprise I got through that in uh, one blade in fact had I not dinked it when I uh, Put the blade down, and it would have uh, been good, some good, uh, good use to go. But uh, that's uh, that's no longer gone. But hey, I tell you, I, I know I said I kept measuring, but it still seems so tiny that it almost feels it can't be right. Happily, Andy at Andycraft has knocked up some shims for me, and is kindly letting me use his sand drill to uh, drill the holes. A set of shims, uh, ready to get some paint. Morning. Well, if I hadn't uh, confessed my error to you, uh, I don't think you ever would have known. So that's the uh, the shim plates in, and it's more. I mean, I've got <laughs> this is just without the cutlass bearing, and it's with some uh, some little uh, spacers just to try and get. But that's that's more or less more or less aligned-ish. But there's no point I don't think doing any more until I'm in the water. Uh, and well, obviously I have to fit the rest of the stern gear. And then the rest of this morning, I've fitted the uh, cooling system, which is just circulates the uh, circulates some uh, coolant through the the skin tank. 
I'd say it was a real faff because uh, I'd previously tested it with a bit of water and you can't get the last four litres of water out of the uh, out of the skin out of the uh, skin tanks and uh, antifreeze and water don't mix unless you really blindly shake them anyway basically I've been, there's been a lot of bleeding and uh, <laughs> bleeding as in not me but bleeding as in bleeding off some water because happily it floats the uh, water above the antifreeze anyway as usual it took a bit longer than I thought but uh, that's done and now it's time for some lunch Right, well the next thing to do is get some uh, electricity to this motor. And you see me grappling with the uh, crimping tool recently not, so I won't uh, bore you again with filming it. Right, well they're in. I have to say, I really struggle with that. It's uh, taken me most of the afternoon. As just, you know, purely because the these cables are just so difficult to manoeuvre and you've got so little space now. Uh, and don't even get me started on these grommets. <laughs> I wish they weren't there, however, I can see why they need to be. Right, so the next thing to do is uh, hook up the uh, CAN bus, the controls for it. Well then, let's uh, give this a go. seems to be doing something, beeping and flashing anyway. Ah. <laughs> it works. Right, like any boy, my first instinct is to see let's see how fast this can go. Well, I think I'd be fairly uh, speeding down the canal if I was going at that speed. I know there's no load on it, but still. Morning. Well, hopefully I'm on the uh, home straight, as it were, now. So, uh, next thing to do is reinstall the, the uh, cuts bearing and get the uh, propeller shaft and the stern gland and the actual propeller in place. I'm hoping it might be done by the end of the day, but uh, I'll probably do myself by now for saying that. Well, that's in. It was straightforward, but it didn't. It took a while because it actually uh, I had. To, it took several attempts to work out what order to do it. Uh, I put the put the the, the the stern gland in first, but because it's so tight, I mean, the, there's enough gap that, of the re recommendation, but uh, it was so tight, and then couldn't get the bolts and the coupling in so that had to go in first and uh, anyway there it's uh, there it's in well the last thing I need to do is just just never use that word although I keep doing is uh, attach the propeller which hopefully is uh, when I say <laughs> hopefully it is straightforward I mean what I mean by that is it should be just a question of Oh, and then this is a little key washer which you have to fold over but I'm not going to do that right now and that will stop the uh, that should stop the oh, well that, that stops this coming undone but uh, just in case for any reason you can only use them once so just in case I have to uh, <laughs> have to be undoing this propeller I will uh, just wait a moment. And uh, literally, without exaggeration, just as I finished all that, the replacement part uh, has arrived. So that's my afternoon sorted.
it's occurred to me that uh, if I get any larger and <laughs> if I get any older, and cert certainly one of those is definitely going to happen, is that if I have to work on this uh, engine again, I'm going to have to find <laughs> somebody both <laughs> younger and uh, smaller because <laughs> it's as you think. You have to be quite contortionist to get to get where you need to go. Well, that's that done. Uh, funnily enough, third time, uh, third time in a row is <laughs> slightly uh, slightly more straightforward than before. And I've just I've just done it. I've timed it by hand this time rather than uh, the torque settings because, uh, well, yeah, look what happened last time. <laughs> That's the rudder back in position, thanks to uh, Rachel's help and uh, also I have to thank Rachel for the advice of for sticking some waterproof grease in the bottom of the, uh, the bearing there and uh, also you can thank her even more for uh, giving me a lump of grease to uh, put in there. So while that's done I thought you know, given that Debdale are never, well never, but <laughs> certainly no rush to actually get the, uh, this finished. I thought I'll have a quick go as it's not raining at uh, trying to get you get the top uh, the tiller arm on. This uh, centre knot is proving a right pain in the proverbial. I guess it's been just standing upright for months now. It's got all gunked up and you know, put the bolt in and it doesn't, well, you know, because the threads are all yucky, yucky technical term. It's, uh, and I don't really want to force it because I don't want to do anything nasty to the thread because otherwise I'm in real big trouble. I mean, <laughs> can't really see it, but that is one very gritty <laughs> piece of towel. So I've been doing this for quite a while and it's dawned on me what's happened is when they did this rudder, which also I've just, real, I've just noticed is slightly, slightly bent still, but that's another just, well, that's just going to let that one go. Uh, however, uh, they also grip blasted it, but they obviously didn't bother covering up the uh, screw, screw uh, hole, as it were, and it's just full of grit blasting grit. I realise grit's like, oh, oh, grit's the same, <laughs> exactly the same size. Yeah, it's grit blasting grit. Bloody hell. Said thank you, Chris. Yes. Let's do a bit of dry. Uh, look at all the grit on that. It's, yeah, it's, uh, I would have been, <laughs> I would have metaphorically screwed, but literally unscrewed. We're also having to do the bolt, bolt because that got buggered up as well. Ah, there we go. <laughs> well, thank goodness for Chris. I would have been said. <laughs> been sunk. Brilliant. Thank you very much Chris. Right, it's good to have a functioning rudder again, even if it is very slightly wonky. So annoying. Right, it's taken the whole month, but uh, finally, <laughs> finally got a, some working stern gear. That was just for 30 seconds because these are meant to be water lubricated and there ain't no water at the moment. Well, that's my time used up for about this week. So, great to actually get everything done. Uh, that's a big milestone. I could actually now go in the water and uh, obviously all of this, I won't know. I won't admit the other proof of the pudding is in the launching to mix a metaphor, but at least I've done as much as I can. And uh, I'm kind of on this aspect, ready to go in the water at last. Anyway, so now it's going to change uh, tack and a bit more back to, uh, back to interiors as it were. Uh, and uh, get some, get the, uh, get some of the main things finished off while I'm still here in the boatyard on the, on the, uh, on the hard standings. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Hope you're well, and uh, catch you later.